Hey everybody, I'm Ryan with Fort Knox Company, and I'm gonna show you how to make these cool diving rings yourself for under $10, step-by-step. Step. I'm gonna show you how to make these so that you and the family can have a bunch of fun during the summer. You're not gonna break the bank. I'm gonna walk you through everything on how to make them, and your kids are gonna love you for it. These things are so cool, and everybody always talks about them. We've even brought them to friends' houses or parties, and everybody asks, where'd you get them? So here is a video on showing you how to make them yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. We are going to be using one inch PVC pipes. These are 10 foot pipes. You can get them at Home Depot for like 267. I will put links for all the parts that you need for one ring. We made three rings and I think in total we were under 30 bucks. It was like eight something maybe plus tax to make one ring. And that's with all the connectors and everything else. So each one with this size, which is about a two foot diameter, um, the circumference of a circle that's two, two plus feet. I just use the outside of our trash can as a mold for the circle because that's really the key on getting that circle shape. But I would even recommend going a little bit bigger because after using them, it's pretty hard as an adult to swim through them. It takes a little bit of skill. Um, I have some videos of my friends trying to swim through it and they're hitting it. Um, the kids can go through it no problem, but I would start no smaller than probably two foot diameter. And the circumference on that was roughly 70 plus inches so i measured it at 72 inches so the first thing that we're going to do is cut one of those 10 foot sticks to 72 74 inches in this case then we're going to take that over to the ground i would not do it on the concrete i would do it on the dirt and we are going to take what i have is like a weed burner or a torch i believe i got it at harbor freight but again i'll put links for these things any of the pieces or tools that i use i'll have links for everything in here but this torch burner i've used it for burning weeds you can use it for roofing, which I use it for building, and then I use it for stuff like this when we're heating up PVC. If you've ever done any type of PVC work or had to do something like that, underground electrical or gas, you can use these torches to actually heat up the PVC slowly, and then it will actually make it very bendable or pliable, and you can bend it into shapes and run curves and stuff. So what I did is I heated it up on the ground, and this is where you can take your time, just apply light heat over it. It takes just a minute, and then you'll start to see at a certain heat point, it like, it starts to get real flexible. You'll see it all of a sudden start to bend. If you rush it, you'll get some burn marks, which you'll see in some of the video. I did have some burn marks, which is fine. Later on, I just sanded that out and painted it, but we're gonna cut it to length. We are going to heat it up and then we're gonna bend this thing around our trash can or whatever circular shape you wanna go with. If you have one of those, um, large plastic pools or anything that has a circular shape, you can use that as a mold. Just do the math on how long you want that piece to be to make sure we can make it all the way around. Once we lay that on the ground, we throw it around, use some gloves. This stuff is gonna be pretty hot, so you don't wanna hold on to it too long, just like taking something out of the oven. We're gonna put it around that circular shape. We're gonna hold it with one hand, and then I have some water standing by because it takes forever for this stuff to cool down. You just pour some water on it, or if you have an extra hand, have them just drizzle a little bit of water around it, and that cools it down enough for it to actually start holding its shape. So you don't have to spend all day sitting there for it to naturally cool down. Just pour some water on it, it'll hold its shape, and then we can move right into the next part. You're then gonna probably cut the ends again, just because because sometimes the ends when you're heating it and grabbing it, it may distort the shape of the circle. But I trimmed it just slightly to where I could get a good circular shape. If you still wanna make sure it fits perfectly into your first T fitting, you can grab some pliers and you can squeeze the end of the pipe a little bit just to kind of shape it back to the circular. We're gonna use some PVC glue, we're gonna put on that T, and we're gonna put the T to connect the two pieces to make that full circle. You can just do this by hand. Once you put the PVC glue on there, it usually helps it kind of slide in and fit, and it's a little bit flexible still, so you can put that together. Make sure that T molding is sitting flat with the circular shape. So I use the ground for this to make sure the T is sitting flat along with the circle on the ground. And before we get too far into this, I just wanna let you guys know, please hit like and subscribe, it really helps me out. And if you want to, you can even grab yourself a cool shirt now. I have shirts out, I got the store up and running. I make them myself, I design them myself, and I ship them out within about a day or so. I think I have them listed for like 20 bucks. Nothing crazy, but just another way that you can support me or the channel. And I have some really cool designs. Everything has a flag on the sleeve. It's really cool and patriotic, a lot of different colors. And like I said, it's just one way that you can support me and the channel, but let's get back to it. The next thing is cutting your legs and the base. This I used 10 inch pieces. So each leg that comes off is about 10 inches with the T and then 10 inches. So it's just over 20 inches in length. And then connecting that to the center is 10 inches. So I ended up cutting six 10 inch pieces and then the riser from the base 
to the ring, you can kind of set that as you will. I went with 14 inches because I knew from the top of the ring to the base, it would be just about three feet. And I knew that that would be able to go under the water in the shallowest part of our pool. But if you want to do different heights or you want to do something for a deeper pool and you want it to stand taller, you can obviously cut that riser piece any length that you want so that when it sits on the ground of the pool, that ring will be at whatever height you desire. So once you have all those 10 inch pieces cut and you have your riser cut, I assembled the legs and the base first. So really here's the only tricky part, which I think there's probably a couple ways to figure it out, but I just went with the cheapest and easiest that I thought just first offhand was we have to weight the base so when I was assembling those base pieces and I was creating those eyes, I wanted to figure out a way to put something in there. I wouldn't put anything metal in there because it would rust. And I didn't have anything else that was composite or heavy plastic or something. So I just went with these pebbles that were here by the yard that I've, I've been doing some construction and we have some pea gravel. I took some pea gravel. I used one of the pieces of PVC to make sure that it would fit through. And I used it kind of like a funnel. And I just sat there, it took about five minutes. And I sat there and I poured some pea gravel through through one of the pieces of pipe to make sure that it would fit. And then once I had a pile of pea gravel in this uh, five gallon bucket, I just rinsed it really quick to make sure there was no dirt or dust on it. That way, when we do put it in the pool, it's not washing it and putting any dirt in the, in the pool. But I just rinsed them really quick. Then each 10 inch piece, four of them, I put a cap on and then I started filling them. So I filled each one up and then just set it to the side. Then I glued the two pieces together with a T and then when I put the piece that goes from the center out to the legs, I then filled that part of it. So I had basically a T of tens, 10 inch pieces filled with rocks. I know it sounds a little bit probably cumbersome or a little complicated, but it really wasn't. It just, it just took me probably an hour in total to do this whole entire project. But I sat there and filled each piece, put the T connector on, put the branch that runs out, filled that up, and then I used that times two. And then when I put the T connector that would connect the base to the top, that didn't have any rocks in it. I just put rocks or little pebbles in all of the base. And then at the very end, we'll drill some holes. You could drill the holes ahead of time, but there's a reason why I waited till the end. Then once you have your base together, kind of looks like a big H or an I, and you have your T that's sticking up right in the middle. You have your T off of the top circle that you made. You can put your riser there and then you have the whole thing set. Let that just kind of set. The glue should be pretty firm and dry within five to 10 minutes. Just let it sit for a second. So that way you don't start pushing on it and affect any of those glued joints. So whatever way you want to weigh these things down is your choice. But again, stay away from anything metal. You don't want it to be rusty. You don't want to have that going on in your pool. I still take them out every time that we're done using them just to let them dry. But once we have all those pieces filled and I have my two little T's that are filled with pebbles, I put my T connector in to make that big H or I shape as a base. You can feel it weighs about a pound or two. We connect it to the top and then we can go to the last step, which would be drilling the holes to make sure that the water can drain in and out. So at the very top, I drilled a three eighths hole, very, very top of the circle. That way any air or water will go all the way through and make its way up because this thing is all connected. Then I did quarter inch drill bit and I just drilled little flute holes all along the top of the base and all along the bottom of the base. This will allow water to go through and air to come in and out. And then obviously if anything gets trapped inside, it goes all the way out the top. Then when you take it out of the water, this again lets everything to drain out. So it's worked really good. Again, it just took a couple minutes, but it's just a little meticulous, but you just drill those holes across the top. And the reason I waited at the end to do this is because if you drill this freehand and you're gluing everything together and you already have your holes drilled, you have to really pay attention to which way those holes are sitting as you're gluing it together. So I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to get it all together, get the pebbles in there and glue it. Then I could come back and drill the holes once I know how everything is sitting so that the holes are completely on top and on bottom. And now the last and final step, if you choose to, because I had some burn marks and I just thought it would make it more fun is to paint these things. I just use basic rattle can. I, uh, they're made for plastic, metal, and other materials. It's been holding up really good. I let it dry for about a day or so in the sun just to make sure that it was completely cured. But before I painted it, I just went over it with some 200 grit sandpaper, smoothed everything out, made sure it had a good bonding surface, and then I sprayed one red, blue, and yellow. Again, have fun with it, do whatever, make it a project with the kids. But painting it definitely makes it a lot more fun, and it also makes it easier to see underwater. And now that we have these things built, we can go ahead and throw them in the pool. Again, let that paint dry if you decide to paint it but now you can use them all summer long. So let's throw these things in the pool. Let me show you guys some of the video of us actually using them in the water and how they work.
And there you have it. That's pretty much it. I hope you found the video helpful. If you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe. I got all kinds of videos on fun projects like this and obviously DIY things like building this casita, this whole garage, everything, electrical, plumbing. I do it all here on the channel. Um, I just put some tiling videos out. I also have merchandise now. I make the t-shirts myself. I design them. I'll link them here in the video. So if you want to support me in the channel, another way that you can do that is by hitting like, hitting subscribe or maybe even grabbing a cool shirt. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Other than that, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you on the next build.